everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Cafe. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode 3 of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved. Last episode, we were working on upgrading our Tinker's tools and making ourselves a full set of iron armor, all of which cost way, way too much iron, but we managed to get it done. And since the end of last episode, uh, I have spent basically a bunch of time mining, getting as much stuff as I possibly can. I only managed to get two diamonds, which is really annoying because we really need to get ourselves an assembly table to start moving on with some of the machines but there are a couple of things that we can do today before we get those diamonds and they come in the form of the blast furnace so we mentioned this a little bit i think last episode uh, the blast furnace is required to get steel which is required to move on with a lot of the stuff within feed the beast infinity evolved so if we look up a blast furnace, there are two different types. I've decided I'm going to go with the one from Immersive Engineering because it's a little cheaper uh, in the fact that it's a smaller multi-block. It's a 3x3 three three as opposed to the Railcraft one, which is a 3x4x3. Three three. So it's a bit bigger. Uh, it is hollow. This one's not, but it does require a couple more blocks. And especially considering these things require Ender Pearls, glue, or TNT, I decided I want to go with the one that was a little bit cheaper. And today we're going to try and make it using glue. Now, the way we're going to do that is by putting horses into our smell tray, which I was hoping was going to be an easy job because my plan was to make a golden lasso, which for those who don't know, the golden lasso is a little item that basically allows you to pick up mobs, hold them within the golden lasso, and then put them back down again wherever you want. So I was going to go away, pick up some horses, because by the way, we have a ton of them around. Uh, so I was going to pick up the horses and just put them back down in the smell tray, and it was going to be so easy because the golden lasso is actually not that hard to make either. It's four gold, four string and then an eye of ender which is the ender pearl and a blaze powder now when i first looked at blaze powder i thought oh great cinder pearls cinder pearls usually spawn in desert biomes and desert biomes are usually super duper common like you usually cannot get rid of desert biomes so i was gonna go ahead and just go to one of those try and find some cinder pearls make the golden lasso and it was gonna be so flipping easy but as you can see by this map right here i walked for too long. I walked for ages and ages and did not find a single desert. The only time I wanted a desert, I could not find one. So there were no cinder pearls. Then I thought, you know what, we'll just go to the nether. We've got armor, we've got tools, let's go fight some blazers, right? No. So with the, the choice there would either be make a diamond pickaxe, make a, an obsidian portal, and then light it with flint and steel. But it turns out that flint and steel requires flipping steel so we can't make that either now we could just sit there we could make the portal we could like put it all down and then put like a block of lava next to it or put some fire next to it and wait and hope that it lights but i don't want to do that i don't want to sit around for like 25 minutes waiting for it to light so instead what we're going to do is we're going to go with what was probably a much easier option anyway uh, we're going to make a lead which is a vanilla minecraft mechanic and we're just going to drag basically some horses from where they are back into the smell tray thankfully you do get multiple balls of glue per horse so hopefully we're only going to need like two maybe three horses to get this thing uh, up and running uh, and for this we're going to need some string which thankfully we have a ton of because there are like three cave spider spawners down underground we also did get some slime balls last episode but if you don't have any slime balls you can use congealed blood as an alternative which you can get basically by standing in the smell tray like so there we go <laughs> if you stand in there long enough you will get enough congealed blood to then pull out into a congealed blood ball which you can then use to make a lead if you happen to not have any slimes which i know i have done multiple times in the past so let's grab those two i think you can only use one lead per horse i don't know if you actually get this back but basically we need to find ourselves a horse now last episode when we were trying to get uh, 24 leather and also by the way i did miscount a little bit last episode i think i said we needed 48 leather when in fact we only needed 24 so uh, that's just something to bear in mind if you go try and make your own leather but the uh, last episode there were so many horses like so many it was absolutely crazy now knowing my look we will run around this time and there will be absolutely zero horses. Now, it shouldn't be the case because when I went around trying to look for that desert biome, I did find, like, a bunch of horses. I walked past so many of them. So I'm kind of hoping that we get a little bit lucky and maybe just find some over here. 
just my flipping look. The only time that I actually want horses, like the only time I think ever, ever that I have actually wanted horses that were none for flipping miles around. We're like 100 to 200 blocks away from our base. Let me quickly throw down a waypoint over here. Let's go new. I'm going to put horses so we can come back and get the rest of them in the second. We're 372 blocks away from our flipping base, but we should be able to grab this horse and I think just kind of drag him back. He seems to be okay with it. So... Well, I'm going to pull this guy back, and then hopefully we can just get him to stand in the smeltery. I think we might have to put a couple of cobblestone blocks around the top of the smeltery to make him stay in there, because I have a feeling he's not going to like being in there, but we will have to see, and we lost him. Do we have to stay somewhat close? We might have to stay a bit closer to him. Come on. Come on. Come on. I, I don't have all day. All right, here we go. We're almost there. You've almost made it. This took way longer than I thought it was going to take. It's going to take me forever to get all of these horses over here. But here we go. All we need to do now, this guy does seem to struggle a little bit with water. So hopefully we can just kind of come on up, up, up here. Come on. There, come, the, the, the round. The, 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 up, yeah, there we go. All right, stay up there. And then just up, up here. Up here and then into the smeltery. There we go. Just, nope, stay, stay in there. Like I said, I think we're going to have to kind of cage him in a little bit, which is going to look horrible, but should work just fine. Uh, I think we need a fence maybe to get rid of this like lead. I'm not quite sure, but it is done. We now have, let's have a look, 432 millibuckets worth of glue in the smeltery. So each ball of glue requires 144 millibuckets, and basically the way you do it is just pour the glue out into an empty cast. Make sure it's at the bottom of the smeltery. You can do that just by clicking on it, and if we let that go... We should get our first ball of glue. Nice. So this is going to get us, it looks like, three precisely. And I think if I my calculations were correct, we need like eight of these to get that up and running. And oh, I'm getting attacked. All right. Okay. Also, for those who are wondering why I did not cook up my beef before eating it, because I didn't, uh, for some reason in uh, Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved, the hard mode or expert mode, uh, you cannot cook beef or chicken or anything. If I try and cook chicken in a normal furnace... It just does not work. It, it doesn't let me do it. Uh, instead, you can either uh, just eat it raw in the case of, like, beef. Chicken is a bit of a different situation because you can get poisoned from it. Uh, but with chicken, you could just put it on a drying rack and it turns into chicken jerky. So apparently, that's what we're supposed to do with chicken, I guess. I'm not too sure. We'll also put our uh, zombie brains on the drying rack. But... What I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to get probably two more horses so we can get our ball of glue count up to approximately nine. And I'll be back in a second. All right. And again, a little while later, this is the last horse that we should need. Come on, just nicely, nicely fall in. There we go. All right, that's fine. That is fine. That should get us the last couple of pieces. We've already got six. I did start smelting up some hardened clay for the kind of outsides of the blast brick that we're going to make. You should give us the last bit of glue that we need. Thank you very much. I think, if I'm not mistaken, we only need seven to get this thing up and running. We will go ahead and make the rest just because I don't want the smeltery to be too backed up with all kinds of other stuff. So we'll take you. We'll take that. And we will probably get one more out of this. We'll probably get ten in total, which means we did get four from that last toss, which is pretty cool. Thank you very much. So... What we need to do now is we need to actually make the stuff. So we need to put hardened clay in the corners, sand in the middle, like so, and then the glue in the middle of that. That gets us the blast brick. We are going to need, I think, 27, so 28 should be enough. And again, for now, I'm going to put this kind of over here. We need to move because I'm not a fan of this little island that we've got. It is a mess. So at some point, I will build a house or a base and we'll move somewhere else. But for now, we just need to get things up and running. So I will put this over here. And the blast furnace from Immersive Engineering is simply just a 3x3x3 three by three by three with no holes, no nothing like that. You just make it a big 3x3 three three square. And then to finish it off, you need to use the hammer from Immersive Engineering, which is this one over here somewhere. Where the heck is it? Over here. We need to get the engineer's hammer, which is made using two sticks, two string, and two sticks, two iron, and one string. So uh, we don't have any sticks. That's fine. We can go ahead and make some using our old friends Birch and Oak. Thank you very much. We do have a quite a bit of string. We'll take you. And then iron we can get from our smeltery. So I'll make sure it's at the bottom. Make sure we have our ingot cast. And that should be us set to go. And then once we've got this up and running, we can actually start making steel, which is going to be pretty cool. We can then, if we want to, you know, make the flint and steel and stuff like that. And uh, we probably won't be using our steel to make flint and steel uh, anytime soon. But right click. 
Boom. And I'm not quite sure what the heck this is. I, I did a bit of testing in a single player world and I got this same kind of weird glitch where from some angles it looks fine. From some angles it just looks weird as heck. You can kind of see the the like um, drying racks over there through the blast furnace. It does work. I just have no idea what the heck's up with it. Uh, basically all we have to do with this is if we take some iron and smelt it up in here, it should turn into steel. I did find a, quite a bit of creosote oil and coal coke down uh, whilst I was mining because I did come across uh, like an old abandoned railway thing. So uh, we've got those as well if we need them at any given time, which is pretty nice. And uh, let's see, if I put you in there, in the top, I guess. And how long is it going to take me to make steel? Let's have a look. Steel, uh, if we go through to the immersive engineering ingot, it should show this guy. We do have to use, it says coal. But I think it's either coal coke or charcoal. It doesn't look like you can use normal coal. It takes 1,200 ticks, uh, 20 ticks per second in Minecraft, which makes 1,200 ticks approximately one minute. So it's going to take about a minute per piece of steel, which isn't exceptionally long, but it's still a pretty long time considering steel is required for a lot of what we need to make. So we should probably, for now I'm going to use my coal coke. We should A, probably get some charcoal cooking so we don't have to use the coal coke. Uh, but we should also make quite a bit of this. Uh, so what I want to work on next, because I'm kind of just going to leave this running with a little bit of iron in it and we'll come back when we need it. We're probably not going to use the steel this episode, so we'll probably leave this running and come back and use it next episode once I've had time to smell up a fair bit of it. But what I want to do for the remainder of today's episode, after I have turned off the very annoying waypoint in front of me, is I want to start making some of the recommended machines from this little guide that we have over here uh, that we're going to need to actually progress once we have steel. And those two machines are the Thermionic Fabricator and the Carpenter. So both of these, I think, are from uh, Forestry. At least I think the Thermionic Fabricator is, yeah. Both of these are forestry machines that are not usually used for making stuff like machine frames or anything like that. But uh, again, with Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved, we're kind of going and using machines that we would not normally use for uh, for stuff like this. But the Thermionic Fabricator is on the list. And to make this, we need three glass, four gold, one sturdy casing, which is made using a but ton of bronze, as well as this golden chest from the iron chest mod, which has been re recipied to require a iron chest, as well as golden plates, each of which, of course, much like with the iron plates, require two gold. That is a ton of gold, as well as the, the iron chest, which requires iron plates, and the normal chest, which either requires mini chests, whatever the heck they are, uh, as well, uh, or the, uh, the normal kind of chest recipe down here. Nice. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to start by making some bronze. Now, I'm probably going to go away to smelt the rest of the gold because this is going to take quite a bit of time. But, for those who don't know, the easiest way, I think, for us to make bronze is to simply put some copper and some tin in the smelt tray. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a 3 to 1 ratio, even in the smelt tray, for bronze. I think it's 3 copper to 1 tin. So, 48 to 16. Yeah, so for every 3 copper, we want to put in 1 tin. So, like, 3... And then three, and then we'll put in two tin like that. And that should give us an even eight bronze. I think that should give us eight bronze ingots worth, I think. I think you get one for, like, every bronze and tin you put in there. So the fact that we put eight ores in, actually, they probably double. So we'll probably get 16 bronze from that, which will hopefully be pretty good. Uh, we also need a bit more aluminium brass in there as well. Where did I put my aluminium brass ingots? They are over here. Let's go ahead, and I think we might need two. So I'll put two of those in uh, as well. And we're almost out of lava. Actually, we've got a little bit left, about third. We'll put the aluminium brass in. And the reason we need that is because you'll notice that the thermionic fabricator, as well as the carpenter, I might add, which also is just a bronze hogging machine, uh, require these uh, bronze gears. And to make pretty much every gear in Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved that is not a wooden gear or a stone gear, you need to use the smelter and you need a gear cast, which we have to make using either gold or aluminium brass in the smelter with uh, and pour it over a stone gear. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a stone gear real quick, which I think is just a wooden gear, which I believe if the recipe hasn't changed, which it might have, is just four sticks. Uh, one, two, three, four, it is. And then if we surround that with cobblestone, that should get us some stone. It does. And then if we stick that in there and pour some aluminium brass over it, that should get us a gear cast, which we can then use to actually start making the gears. How much bronze does it take per gear? It takes 576 millibuckets, which is quite a bit of bronze, considering one ingot's worth is 144 millibuckets. So that is 
a total of four ingots. So it's not that much, actually. It's kind of as much as you'd expect it to cost. But that means we're going to get four gears worth out of this bronze, which I think is like, we're going to need two lots of that to make the two sturdy casings, which means we're going to need quite a bit more bronze in there. Ooh, I hope we have enough copper. Do we have any more lying around? If not, I'm... Oh, we do good stuff. We might have to go on a bit of a mining trip if not, but we do. So, let's pull all these out. All right, so quite a long time later, I've just gone ahead and smelted up pretty much all of the ingots that we're going to need to make these two machines, uh, including most of the bronze and all of our gold. So we've now got all of our gold turned into ingots. And I also realized that I should probably make a casting basin at this point so we can pull out full blocks worth of, uh, of ingots at a time instead of pulling them out one by one because it takes forever. But nevertheless, we should now be able to make both the, the thermionic fabricator and the carpenter. I'm going to start with the carpenter because it is considerably easier to make we just need a sturdy casing i might as well go ahead and make the other sturdy casing whilst i'm at it i did go ahead and smelt up some glass so boom 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 with some glass at the top and the bottom and we get a carpenter nice Next on the list is, of course, our Thermionic Fabricator, which is a little bit more tricky because it does require these chests, so I am going to need some wood. And for those who are wondering, the inventory over here is this chest. Uh, any chest that you put within a, uh, like, one block radius of a crafting station uh, is accessible by the crafting station, uh, but I only think you can have one. Like, if we put these chests, like, here, I don't think that would work, but uh, that's just how that is. And you can access stuff from here and put it back, which is quite nice for bringing stuff in and out and crafting. And it also looks like they fixed the glitch where you couldn't shift right-click recipes into the crafting station uh, if there was a chest near it. So now you can actually go ahead and do stuff like this. If you hold down shift and left-click on this little question mark whilst looking at the recipe in any eye, if you happen to have those items in your inventory, maybe even in the inventory over here. Let me test that. Does that work? It might craft it up. Oh, it does. That is so cool. So even if you have the stuff just in this chest, you can shift click it into the crafting station. That is actually really cool. I might start putting uh, all of my like most usable stuff instead of just my seeds uh, in this chest over here. Anyway, now we're going to need, I think, 16 uh, iron worth over here because we need to make eight of these plates using our forge hammer. Uh, so let's make eight of those as well as eight golden plates. And I don't want to waste any gold, so let's not go too crazy there. Then all we need to do is surround our normal chest with iron plates, gets us an iron chest, surround that with golden plates, gets us the gold chest. Uh, also, the reason I think these recipes have been changed, by the way, is just to make storage a little bit harder to do, um, because, of course, applied energistics has been pushed way further down the line, and uh, I think they want people to use things like Jabber and the Draws mod instead of just using massive chests from iron chests, uh, but that might just be me. I'm not quite sure. I think that's why they've done it. Nevertheless, let's put some gold in, let's put some glass in. I didn't do those in the right order, and that gets us a Thermionic Fabricator, and for now, I will chuck both of these down, I guess, like over here. Uh, we cannot use either of them yet because we do not have any power whatsoever. But what we will do next episode is we will come back. Hopefully, I will have got some diamonds by that point, which have proved incredibly difficult to find. Uh, but hopefully, I will have enough diamonds to make an assembly table. And we can actually start to progress on with some of the stuff uh, in this pack. Get some machines, get some power going. Uh, probably even start some Britannia and some Thorncraft sometime soon. Uh, because both of those are kind of needed to get into some of the really cool stuff uh, and just to finish off here a couple of people in the comment section of the last episode requested that i take a look at the recipe for the angel ring which is of course the item that allows creative mode flying in extra utilities boom <laughs> look at this thing look at it it's gonna be so long before we can fly in like like we were in creative mode we need from diamond spikes nether stars this thermostatic harness which is another thermograph thing we need so much stuff so much stuff. It is crazy. But with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved there. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like. It really does help out a lot. For those who are wondering what the seed is, I will go ahead and stick that in the description so you can go and copy that and play along uh, if you would like on this world. I am using the Biomes of Plenty World Generation. Uh, I saw a couple people asking about that uh, before, so just hit Biomes of Plenty in the World Generation. Type in that seed and you should, you should get the exact same world that I got. I think you spawned in kind of just over there. But to be honest, yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.